Welcome to Liberty Revealed, the only show where you will learn about all things liberty. Your host for the show is a registered libertarian who's been involved in politics for more than 25 years. He has a passion for teaching others about the concept of personal liberty. Please welcome your host, Mike Mahoney. I am a big believer in personal liberty. To me, my rights end where your rights begin. This means the law should ensure that your freedom to live your life as you choose does not impact everyone else's freedom to live their lives as they choose. This is personal liberty. If you want to learn more about personal liberty and get more from this show, sign up to receive my 10-page guide on personal liberty entitled Liberty Revealed. You need to fill out a simple form located at yogispodcastnetwork.com forward slash liberty revealed. Once you read through that ebook, you are guaranteed to be in a position to apply the philosophy of personal liberty. Once again, yogispodcastnetwork.com forward slash liberty revealed. Now, let's get into today's topic. Welcome back to another episode of Liberty Revealed, the only show that teaches you about personal liberty. Uh, today's guest is Kason Pratt, and he is the host of the Awake the Iron podcast. Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, Mike. Happy to be here, and uh, I'm honored to be on, and I'm looking forward to it. Really happy to have you, and um, love the name of your podcast. Awake the Iron is that's Thank you. amazing. So um, how did you come up with that name? Actually, uh, there was a Latin phrase called Desperta Ferro, which means like shake the iron or awake the iron. I guess it was a, a old Roman battle cry where, you know, the armies on opposing hills would you know rattle their equipment to intimidate each other and i just liked that imagery that um if we if we have to have a battle maybe it's a battle of our minds or a battle for liberty or a battle for information that that we can you know we can make some noise too against the tyranny or oppressors or um people censoring or whatever so i just kind of thought thought it was cool awesome yeah i love the name it's it's it, it, it'll st it's going to stick with me. Um, it's what some people say about this show too, that the name sticks with them. And I don't really know why, but yeah, I like it. I like it too. You know, but um, I wanted to talk today about vaccine mandates. I mean, we know that president Biden came out and um, he gave a speech that was supposed to be more about September 11th, but really wasn't as usual. Um, and he mentioned that he has instructed the um, department of labor to come up with an emergency rule requiring employers who have more than 100 employees to require their employees to be vaccinated or not have a job. Um, let's start with a simple question. How do you feel about that? Um, short answer, it's ridiculous. Long answer, it's ridiculous. So, <laughs> I mean, for, you know, let us backpedal here a little bit. Um, these, are, these are illegal. Um, our, I live in Ohio, so the governor, just like a lot of other states, came out, uh, you know, last year or whatever. Oh, uh, everybody has to wear masks. It's a mandate and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, that doesn't mean anything. Um, I use the analogy that if the governor said, hey, everybody, you got to turn in your wallet. Uh, it, it's a mandate. It doesn't mean you have to do it just because the guy said it. And th this ticks me off. Um, so I'm like, okay, I'm going to make a mandate then. If 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 that's the game, I'm going to say, everybody's got to give me your wallet. And of course, everybody laughs and says, get out of here, you crazy <laughs> freak. Um, but there's no difference. There's zero difference between my mandate and the governor's. The only difference is that he holds the title of governor. It doesn't make it so. It doesn't make it the law. And so there there isn't a law that says you have to do that. Actually, I uh, <clears throat> heard the... Uh, lawyers from the 1851 Center for Constitutional Law, uh, they said, if you uh, disobey the mandates, you're complying with the law, the real law. So it, it's crazy. And I don't see anything about that in the Constitu U.S. Constitution as an enumerated right or an enumerated power of the government. And so 10th Amendment says anything not enumerated to the federal government goes to the state. So the fact that the president, part of the federal government, said it, it's not in the Constitution at all, so it's up to the state. But 
he can use it's he uses his influence as president to kind of scare people it's, it's coercion is what it is into thinking they have to all of this could end in one hour if everybody just said no we're not doing it um so I sorry totally this is a long answer to a short no, question but. I, I totally agree with you and i'm going to say this you know every every quote mandate that's come down where anyone has ever gotten fined um arrested whatnot and has taken it to court they've won that's um, right. For, obvi- exactly obvious, right. for obvious reasons, it's not a law. You didn't violate a law. It was just simply a mandate. Um, but not. But number two, what's happened with that here in California, we had an issue where the um, somebody took the state to court, and the judge was like, "This is alarming." You know, a non-elected official is passing these rules. Who who allowed them to do that? And chastised the governor for not doing his job. You know, um, that's good. But but then you've got. This administration today, the, the Biden administration, seems to have no respect for the rule of law. So like the eviction moratorium, I understand people are struggling and whatnot. But if the Supreme Court said, no, you can't do it. Why did he turn around and go ahead and do it again a second time? I mean, it had already been stricken down once. So there's no respect for the rule of law. And he knows that the federal government doesn't have the authority to do this. So what he's trying to do is use a loophole of having the Department of Labor put pressure on employers. And I mean, let's be real. I, my wife and I were talking about it and we said if we had 102 employees, we would suddenly have two businesses with 56 employees because uh, <laughs> we're not complying good for with you. the garbage. Good for you. You know, we're, yeah, that's, we're, not, we're that's... not complying with that. But you and know what? I mean, that's, that's what we need is people thinking that way. Like, um, yes. yeah, to preserve rights. And, you know, I always say, am I more free today than I was yesterday? And unfortunately, it's almost always no. No. Yeah. I, I think I think for me, the the thing here is this. Um, too many people have rolled over real easily on this. Um, and I said this to you in the green room, you know, the party of my body, my choice is now trying to tell people that they must have a vaccine. And they come up with all these crazy arguments about, well, there's helmet laws for wearing, riding a motorcycle and there's seatbelt laws for being in a car. And I always say one thing right back. Does it require the, for you to comply? Does, do you have to inject a foreign substance into your body? If the answer is no, then it's apples to oranges. Yeah. I will also say that I, I want to make this clear before we go any further. If someone wants to be vaccinated, then go get vaccinated. And if you don't, don't. Don't let anyone force you to make that decision. That's a personal choice. It is like like I ended up getting vaccinated because my wife had to go back to Canada. Her, her mom had died. And so she's going back to see her dad. And it was required for her to have that. And I did not want her to go through that by herself. So, you know, I went at being a good husband. I went with her. Um, do I regret it? No, because, I mean, you know... I probably would have eventually done it anyway. I'm a little bit older um, and it's safer for me. But what I don't like is all of the crazy people. And I do say they're crazy because there's, it's almost like on certain issues, their brain just gets disconnected and then they, their mouth goes and then they reconnect their brain later because some perfectly, I mean, I, I have a really good friend who we had a long argument the other day about whether this stuff should be required. And she kept saying, well, but it's helping others. It's helping others. And I said, but that's not true. It's not helping anybody. You know, it's only helping the person who has the vaccine. And if, and if the people who don't have it want to make that choice, why should we stop them? So what do you think about how people, how easily people have kind of given up their rights? Yeah. Well, right. And when it all started, um, I've talked about this on my show that uh, when, you know, all this stuff started, I was I was not shocked that government would try to gain power. That did not shock me at all. Mm-hmm. I'm a student of history. I understand uh, how that works. Then I was I was uh, disappointed, but I was like, yeah, there's government for you. What did shock me and shock is an understatement. It actually it, it ripped my heart out, man. I, my heart was broken when m- my brothers. Uh, People who live in America, right? Um, People who I thought loved freedom and liberty as the highest uh, virtue just rolled right over and 
then I'm like, oh my gosh, this is worse than I thought. And I'll be, I'll be frank with you. Um, I, I, my country is lost. Um, we're going to have to, we're going to have to dig and make up for it and get it back because it's the America I thought was there. It's not there, man. And like, I cried, I cried and, um, it was just awful. And what, I, I have my suspicions about what's really going on here behind the curtain. And it feels like a, a test almost like, hey, people who want to grab power are like, hey, let's see what we can get away with. Um, like, like in the military, you know, they, they, you send a, a small detachment out to like, you know, re do reconnaissance, right, to check it out. And then you come back and report like, oh, well, they're vulnerable, so we could do this. So I feel like that was what last year was, and I don't know what's coming, but I don't think it's good because everyone, I'll put that in quotes, it's not everyone, because there's you're here and I'm here and there's others, but it felt like everyone just knelt down. It was terrible. I, I agree with you. I think I think something strange is afoot. I'm not sure what it is yet. Um, we'll find out. But, you know talking about the vaccine mandates there's people who will say that it's because people are refusing to get the vaccine and i come back with all right everything is about messaging in the world you know you have to convince people that things are safe that it's good for them and if you think about the messaging throughout the pandemic if the u.s government was a company trying to market a product they'd be out of business because they would have zero sales because first it was wear a mask and then it was um you know if you uh what's that? if you wear a mask um then you're then you're good then it was well wear two masks oh no don't wear two masks because if you wear two masks that's a problem then it was get you know vaccinated people don't need to wear masks vaccinated people need to wear a mask if they're indoors vaccinated people need to wear a mask if they're outdoors um the the messaging just keeps changing and so when my government tells me, oh, all you're going to have to do is this and then we're good, I just can't trust that because they've proven to not be trustworthy. Right. Um, it, it's really it's really that simple. They have proven to not be trustworthy. And like you said, I feel like the country's sort of lost. And part of why I feel that way is, you know, here in this kind of statistic sort of proves it here in California. We had a recall um, and it was just yesterday. Um, no, I'm sorry, two days ago. And the governor held his position and they asked, like when they did the exit polling, the people who were um, voting to recall him did not like his pandemic, the handling of the pandemic. The people who voted to not recall him liked his handling of the pandemic. We are so fragmented as a society that for one, it kind of shocks me that they were able to get as much compliance as they were able to get on one hand, but on the other, People are so easy to be like, oh, it's no big deal. It's no big deal. But I always say this. There's a there's a great meme that goes around libertarian circles. And it's like, you know, first they came for this person. No one spoke up. Then they came for this person. No one spoke up. You know, now they're coming for me and there's no one to speak up. You know, um, mm -hmm. and that's what scares me is that people, um, they, they don't understand that. Every time you give an inch, they're going to take another mile and another mile and another right. mile. And before long, the freedom you used to have, you won't even recognize. I mean, my gosh, they're already saying in, in Los Angeles County, you can't go to a bar, a nightclub, or a restaurant unless you prove your vaccine status. I looked at my wife and I said, I'm vaccinated, but I'm going to tell you what, <laughs> I ain't showing nobody my vaccination status. That If I have to put, show them that in order to get into a restaurant there... I guess I'm not going to a restaurant there. It's that simple. Yeah, good for you, man. And, um, you know, you were talking about, you know, the, the, the masks help. We got to wear masks because they help. And then all these policies and, oh, you know, we got to you, you got to help keep other people from not getting sick, when, which it's like, when did that ever happen? But in my in my view, uh, I, I've stopped like arguing with people about evidence because both sides kind of have some evidence and then you can dig deeper and really, really flesh it out, which takes a lot of work, but you can do it. But 
None of that matters to me. Uh, it doesn't matter if this thing is the most lethal thing on the that has ever happened, or if it's just you know just a trifling nothing. We live in a free country, a free society. I choose to live in a free society, and in a free society, you're free to choose. If you don't like that, leave, move. Like you have choices. If you want to go to a country where you're not free, but everybody doesn't get as sick or whatever, please go there. Like, this is one that I just keep stumbling on, and I don't mean it in a, in a mean way. I'm just being honest. There's no place for me to go. People say, well, why don't you leave? Well, I can't go somewhere else and be more free than here. I, I don't think we're actually that free here anymore, but it's the the freest uh, possibility, right? So, you know, if you, let's say you hate guns and you want to live somewhere where there are no guns, we're not changing this place. Go to a country that doesn't allow guns. How fortunate right. for you that, that it exists. I can't go anywhere else where you have more gun freedom or whatever, or pick, pick your topic. It doesn't matter what it is, right? If you want, so if you want A and A exists elsewhere, please go there. I don't understand why why we have to. I use this analogy before with my with with my co-host. If you and I sit down and play Monopoly, and then someone else says, "Hey, can I play Monopoly with you?" and they sit down, and while we're playing, he says, "Oh, I don't like playing games that have dice, so we're going to change the rules." It's like, no, we're this is Monopoly. Like you use dice. If you wanted to play something else, that's a great analogy. Actually, go play something out. Like you, we all knew the rules when we sat down to play, right? That's the point. And you don't, there's other games to play that don't use dice. Um, I, I have yet to have someone really explain, well, I, I can't afford to move or, you know, whatever the response is. They're all kind of stupid in my opinion. But um, <laughs> so that's the bottom line. We live in a free society. Uh, if you feel like you want to wear a mask, fine. If not, fine. Like, I don't see what the big deal is. And the, I, oh, the, vac I the vaccine, yeah, the, they say the vaccine helps you, um, you know, have your symptoms are less or whatever. Okay. Oh, well, if I choose to have worse symptoms, um, then shouldn't that be my thing? And as a side note, just so you know, all these people, uh, actors, sports figures, government officials are all telling me to get the vaccine. But for me personally, my doctor told me because of my personal situation not to. So I have some, I have some other medical things we're work, we're working on and that is not a good idea right now. So yeah, like, everyone, like God, forbid, God forbid you should take the vaccine and because of your medical issues die from that. And that's, and right. that has happened and that has happened. So, right. So it's like, I got, you got pro football players like you need to go get your vaccine. And I'm like, I'm not going to do what you say. I'm going to do what my doctor says. And for me personally, he said, no, that's not everybody. And that's fine. But even if he said, yes, you should get it. I can still not do it. If he said, I want you to go uh, take this medication. I can still choose to not use exactly. his advice. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Like my favorite, Man. my favorite. And I put favorite in quotes because I'm being sarcastic. My favorite <laughs> argument on, that I see online all the time is um, they'll say, about the making about making the choice um where was i going with this i'm sorry i completely went blank sorry i people, was kind of oh, i know what it, no, I know what it is i know what it is people say oh well you know you're not free to use your body to go murder someone <laughs> and then i say well first of all you know there are laws against that there are laws to stop that okay tell me how well those laws are working has murder been eradicated from our society has bank robbery been eradicated from our society how about rape has it been eradicated from our society? Well, no. Well, there's been laws against those for decades and decades and decades. So obviously all that a law does is attaches a consequence to the action. Well, we all know what the consequence is to, you know, just going out into society, you know, getting in close to people and not wearing a mask and not being vaccinated. You can catch something. But can't you catch the flu, which is, by the way, just as deadly as COVID is? You can catch the flu, right? So how come during flu season we didn't lock 
businesses down exactly. and keep people outside. There, there's definitely something weird about that. Now, what I what I will say is um, the the concept that you brought up of people telling you to leave, your analogy of the Monopoly game is perfect because, okay, we're going to sit down, we're going to play this game. Okay, yeah, let's play this game. Oh, I don't like the rules to this game. You should, well, but I do. Fine, you go play a different game. Well, why should I play a different game? That this is the game we chose to play. <laughs> right. And, Everybody and knew I'm, the rules. And, I, and I'm following the rules. You're the one changing the rules, not me. Right. Um, so I think I think to me that I, I really value consistency and facts. I, I tell I the line I use a lot with people, and I know it's cliched, but I say facts don't care about your feelings. They just don't. I mean, if there was a point in time in my life where I didn't feel like I had a lot of empathy because I'm such a fact-based person. That someone would say to me, oh, well, this this person did this, and then this happened, and then this person fired them. Oh, well. Like, they violated the rule. Why, why am I supposed to cry <laughs> about that? They, they didn't follow the rules. Um, I, I, I once, one of my, one of my sons, uh, my oldest son, when he was in fifth grade, he got, like, you know how in elementary school they give you, like, a E, an S, or an N, you know, for, like, right. citizenship and whatnot? Well, he got yeah. an N for citizenship. And I said, what did he do wrong? Oh, well, he, he's a stickler for the rules when they play games. That's a problem. Why? <laughs> like, like, why is it a problem that he likes to follow the rules? But, you know, tell me, so where, where about in the country are you from? I live in Ohio? Uh, Col- Columbus, Ohio area. Okay. So um, I actually went, oh my gosh, May. I was in Tennessee. You would not know there was a pandemic going on. I didn't see masks. I didn't hear crazy, oh, get away from me, you're too close. None of that. Like, they're just back to normal. And by the way, their cases are next to nothing. Um, but here's my point. Two viruses have been eradicated in the history of mankind. Two. And one of them being smallpox. Um, how in the world do they think that we're, they keep talking about when the pandemic's over, when we're past COVID. It's never going to be past COVID. We have to learn to live with it. And so that's why, like, I personally was really afraid to take the vaccine because my doctor, oh, it's just like a flu shot. Yeah, don't tell me that. The last, out of the last five times I took the flu shot, I quit after the fifth time. I got a bad, bad case of the flu four times. I really didn't want a bad, bad case of COVID. You know, like, I just didn't want that. And he was like, well, but, you know, that's one advantage of the new technology. They're not actually injecting, you know, mm-hmm. the actual virus into you. So, you know, blah, 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 blah. I said, like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll risk it. Um, do I, I, I actually took the Johnson & Johnson vaccine because I also don't trust the new mRNA technology at all. And the Johnson & Johnson is more like old school technology. Um, and I'll tell you, we didn't have – everybody I know that had the two shots, at very least on the second dose – they were really sick. We, my wife and I didn't have any side effects. Our arm was sore where they injected it. Whoopie do. Mm. Um, I, I will say this. I'm, I'm with you on if people want the vaccine, they should get it. If they don't want it, they shouldn't. But you're a perfect example of if you were online and someone said to you, are you vaccinated? And you were nice enough to answer them, which isn't your responsibility to do. Right, and then they right. get all over you for not being vaccinated. Are they forgetting that there's – you know, extenuating circumstances as to why, of course they are, but they're not even going to ask you that you are suddenly this jerk because you won't be vaccinated. Mm -hmm. Um, And the thing that's driving me crazy these days is they call people who don't want the COVID vaccine anti-vaxxers, but yet I'd be willing to bet they have the measles vaccine, the chicken pox vaccine, the smallpox vaccine. They are just against this vaccine. And who wouldn't be? It's supposed to take three years to approve something like this. And they did it Mm -hmm. in a year. I just don't believe that they've covered all the bases. Um, and the fact that they gave the manufacturers immunity tells you a lot, doesn't it? I mean, why give them immunity if it's so safe? But then the bottom line, I mean, we're kind of getting to the end here, but bottom line is Biden in a speech says that you get the vaccine. It works. It really works. And then in the next breath, the unvaccinated are killing us all. H- how? Like, if 75% of Americans are vaccinated, then 75% of Americans are okay. Stop talking yeah, about it. Actually, this. yeah, I want if I could add something to that yeah, what you just it. said, unvaccinated are killing, you know, are going to be killing everybody. Um years ago, 
and I, I saved a copy of it uh, in our local paper. There was a story about the mumps outbreak at the Ohio State University campus area. And they said that they studied 99 people who had the mumps. Okay. And here's the, here's the kicker. The, the headline read unvaccinated to blame uh, for the mumps outbreak. Right. However, if you took the time to actually read the article all the way through the, the article detailed out that of the 99 who had mumps, four were unvaccinated. The rest were vaccinated once or sometimes twice. And I'm like, so the title, the headline contradicted the information in, in the article. The, the writer contradicted herself. And, but I understand why, because if there's an agenda or some kind of thing that's going on behind the scenes, people bank on the fact that you're not going to read the article. You're just going to read the headline. And, uh, I wrote, I wrote the author of the article and never heard back. I'm like, Hey, and I was, I, I didn't like, I kind of played it off. Like, Hey, I realized the title said this, but the article was completely opposite and I never heard back. But so that that's where people say, well, they have evidence, right? Well, here's proof that, uh, you know, unvaccinated cause, cause trouble and they'll, sh they'll show a headline. You got to read the yeah. article and really yeah. find out. And, and even that doesn't necessarily, sometimes you got to do your own digging. So, you know, you know, you, you can't just believe uh, you have to, you have to find out and then you can know. Well, before I let you tell people where to find you, um, I wanted to re relay something in relation to that. About two years ago, um, a friend of mine who is like in a, runs a media relations company, they decided to have a little fun and they published an article um, that literally it was like, the, let's say the headline was like, you know, um, Donald Trump arrested. Uh, and then they wanted to see how quickly it would spread on social media and it spread like wildfire. Hmm. And, and the article, when you click it actually says, well, you're going to be severely disappointed because the article has got nothing to do with the headline. This has been a social <laughs> experiment to see how many of you would actually read the article. Well, they got like, I think something like a million shares of the article, but only like 10,000 click throughs. So uh, oh 990,000 people shared this article without ever even clicking through to see what it was. I mean, I'll admit there's been times on social media where I'll see an article, I'll click through to it real quick because I want to save it for later to read it and I'll scan it. Yep. That matches the headline. All right. I'll share it. Um, you know, but I won't, but, but sometimes you get in there and you're right. You read it and you're like, well, hold on a damn minute. The headline yeah. says that that unvaccinated people well like like the thing right now where they're saying um the the unvaccinated are the only ones dying from the virus right now and then it's not true um right. and I, obviously it's going to be a lot less of of a, a number of mortalities but hey it's still it's happening to vaccinated people as well and right. I understand that the rate is a lot lower, but I mean, like I ask people, you know, are you this concerned about heart disease? How about homeless right. people? Are you that concerned about homeless people too? Um, because this, it's starting to get disgusting that people are saying, oh, but even one life, even one life. Yeah. How about you show us that that's what you really mean? So, so anyway, I really appreciate the time on here. It's been a great discussion about vaccines. Why don't you tell people exactly where they can find you? And then I'll put it all in the show notes for them. Great. Yeah. Um, it, you can find me at awaketheiron.com and my podcast is Awake the Iron. It's on any major podcast player. Yeah, please give it a listen and subscribe if, you, if you're interested. Um, but this has been another episode of Liberty Revealed. Thanks so much for being on. Um, if you guys want to find out about personal liberty and, and learn about your rights as a human being, uh, go to yogispodcastnetwork.com forward slash liberty dash revealed. And I got a little freebie there that I want to give you completely free charge. And it's got 10 points about Liberty. It's got the little, it's got the Statue of Liberty right on the cover. Um, and uh, it's kind of a labor of love of mine. So once again, Liberty Revealed, I'm Mike Mahoney, and I will be back again next week. Thanks for listening to Liberty Revealed, the show where you learn about all things Liberty. Please visit the show's website at yogispodcastnetwork.com backslash LR, 
or you can reach out to Mike directly with your questions and comments. Again, that is yogispodcastnetwork.com backslash L-R.
Thanks for listening to Liberty Revealed, the show where you learn about all things liberty. Please visit the show's website at yogispodcastnetwork.com backslash LR, where you can reach out to Mike directly with your questions and comments. Again, that is yogispodcastnetwork.com backslash LR.